Hi all, I'm Catherine Randalls, Manager of Research Data Services in the eResearch Centre at JCU. Our team connects researchers to technology and the community, and today I'll be covering the management of data and information in research. This is Module 3, Data Record. A data record is a non-public metadata record of the research data and information generated as part of your research project. A data record is for your completed data only. It includes attachments, a total of up to 100 megabytes of data capped at 50 files, or the storage location of your data. If your data is greater than 100 megabytes or sensitive, ask us to store your data. The data record should also include any documentation necessary to understand or reproduce the research, such as survey questions, data dictionary, code books and R script. You can also submit your data record to a public and trusted generalist or spe subject specific data repository such as GenBank or Pangea. If you use another repository, you should still create a data record indicating where your data is located to ensure that you and JCU can meet data governance responsibilities as required under the Australian Code for the Responsible Conduct of Research. The University has developed a data management platform called Research Data JCU. This is a user-friendly system with lots of help text, questions with prompts and links for further information. Help text is found throughout the system by simply clicking on the question mark icon. Research Data JCU guides researchers to develop three records. The first is a research data management plan, second is a data record and third is a data publication. Access to this platform is via the URL provided and detailed login instructions are provided in Module 1 Overview under Section 1.5. A data record can be completed at different times throughout your research project. As you can see from this table, sometimes a data record can be created during a project. For example, when publishing thesis chapters, or it can be completed at the end of your project. It's also important to note that we launched our new data repository platform, Research Data JCU, in January of 2021. So that means any projects commencing from 2021 onwards require a research data management plan, a data record and a data publication. For example, if you're a HDR candidate and 2021 are already partway through your research project, a data record and data publication is required, but you are not required to retrospectively complete a research data management plan. The added bonus of linking your data record from your RDMP is that some of the fields will be auto-populated, saving you double entry and time. So because you created an RDMP at the start of your project and continue to update this information as your project progressed, this will make completing your data record easy as most of the information is automatically populated from your RDMP into your data record. However, I can't stress enough the importance to view and update your RDMP before you create a data record as these details are auto populated through to the data record. If you require further editing of your plan, simply click edit this plan or if you are happy to proceed, click create a data record from this plan and magically you will find yourself in a data record. You will, auto, you will also notice that you can print off a PDF of your RDMP. This is especially handy to attach to an ethics application if required or your confirmation of candidature paperwork. Or alternatively, you can create a data record. By completing a data record, the overall objective is to make it easier to find data and information even after long periods of time have elapsed and to safeguard the integrity of your research methods and findings. You can at any stage go back in to view and update an existing data record before you create a data publication. As with the previous module, I won't step you through all the fields of the data record, but will focus on just a couple of key areas. It's handy to also note that once you have created your data record, you should get into the habit of saving this as you progress. The save icon is at the bottom of every tab. Firstly, you'll need to link to your RDMP. 
the Y tab automatically populates from the RDMP. But now is a good time to cast your eyes over the fields again just to check everything is correct. It's important to remember that projects commenced before 2021 are not required to complete an RDMP, which means that this data record will be blank and you will need to complete all tabs and their fields. The what tab requires some thought as now you need to drill down and clearly explain what the data is about. To begin with, you'll need to establish a data record title. This title should be unique and easy to find later. For example, using the title My Datasets is too generic and doesn't give it in any indication as to what the data is about. It's meaningless to anyone wanting to view the data. Next, you need to describe how and why the data was collected, what it consists of, and a description of any process of analysis that has been applied to the data. The Who tab is auto-populated from your RDMP. The big difference here is, is that the RDMP recalls, records all the people at the project level, whereas now we're drilling down to the data. This section therefore needs to list only the people involved in the collection or creation of the data that you are completing this data record for. Remembering you can choose to have multiple data records attached to one RDMP should you wish. This can actually be easier to manage. The, minim the minimum retention periods in the WHEN tab, including any reasons for extending this period, will already be auto-populated from your RDMP. What you need to add now are details about the disposal dates for your research data and information, as well as any related publications. This means that you'll need to include the titles or full citations and URLs for any publications that are associated with your research data. It's important to note that while your data may be complete and is why you're creating this data record, your research output, for example publication, may still be pending at this stage. So this is really a trigger to help you to keep track of related publications. Now we get to the Where tab. This is an exciting addition as we'll now have a central record as to the location of research data for the university. This tab also allows you to upload the data directly into the data record if it's less than 100 megabytes capped at 50 files. If the data is greater than 100 megabytes or if you have sensitive data, there are other more appropriate storage options available and you would then add the physical location, file path or URL as to where the data is located. To organise these storage options, just email us at researchdata at jcu.edu.au. This is also what you would do if you were working under a contract where the data was required to be stored elsewhere. In these cases, a data record is still required as JCU needs to know where the data is, but instead of uploading the data, you will need to record the URL of where the data is stored, for example, another university or industry data repository or even overseas. So an example is imagine that you are a lead investigator of a project with several other universities but JCU doesn't have the IP of the data. It belongs to, let's just say, Melbourne University. You are still required to create a data record in Research Data JCU, but rather than uploading the data to the data record, you will add the location of where the data is stored at Melbourne University. I'd just like to briefly touch on how to upload or remove data files. So here you need to firstly choose your type. So in this example I've chosen attachments but other options are file path, URL or physical location. You then need to attach the files um, but also just remembering the storage capacity of up to 100 megabytes capped at 50 files. Then you can click to edit on each of the entries to provide more detail of the data. So that's under the notes section you'll see that I've actually said that there's sensitive data, some of it's raw data, some of it's derived data, or, and one of them is a supporting document. And then should you require any amendments, you can edit and redo by um, clicking the red icon. Congratulations, you've now completed a data record. Remember to ensure that you click save and close. We'll now move on to developing a data publication under the publish and share icon in module four. This concludes Module 3. Thank you for joining me.